Welcome back. And today I'm going to make banana blueberry bread or blueberry banana bread. Haven't decided what I'm going to call it, but let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is get the bananas ready. I'm going to move some of this stuff. And I have a I need two cups of bananas. So I might have more bananas than I actually need. So we'll see. So I have very ripe bananas. And if I have more than I need, I'm going to freeze the rest for another um, banana bread or something else I do with bananas. There's other things you can do besides just make banana bread out of it. All right. Here's my two cup measure. So I think I'm going to need at least three bananas, if not more. I'm kind of hoping I get to use all these bananas up and I don't have to worry about freezing them. Now, sometimes you get like a very bad bruise. I just personally leave that out. I'm just going to not worry about using that particular piece. So I'm going to start mashing these up and then I'll measure it and see where I'm at. So I just kind of get a bowl that is somewhat flat on the bottom. I'm using the bowl I usually have my uh, lunch salad in. Make myself a big salad for lunch every day. And this is also the bowl I use to measure how much meat I need at dinner time as well when I do meals that I have to cut up a bunch of meat. So let's see where we're at on this. Because I'm actually doubling the recipe which I do very often because if I don't, then it just does not last nearly long enough. All right, I picked out the wrong thing. I'm looking for a spoon, there we go. Always grab the wrong one. All right, so let's see where we're at here. This banana smells really sweet. Let's see, I think I'm gonna be able to use my other bananas because I do need two cups and I'm not there yet. So well, that's good because I have four overripe bananas that I am hoping to use all tonight. So what I do though, if I'm going to, if I have too many bananas or I don't have time to make banana bread or banana um, pancakes, which are also very good, I'll have to do that another time, I will go ahead and mash, the, instead of freezing the bananas with the skin on them, like some people do, I actually pre-mash them, pre-measure them, and have them ready for the banana bread and freeze them that way in the plastic container with the lid that keeps the air out as much as possible. And I do have, this is not enough, I do have a banana that's ready to go overripe. So we'll just see where I'm at on this. be just perfect with the two cups. Okay. Okay, so that was for me four medium sized bananas, not too big, not too small, and that is the two cups of bananas. So I'll set that aside. And what I did earlier is I had bought a whole bunch of blueberries and then I realized I'm not gonna be able to eat them all. So what I did is I washed up the blueberries when they were still very fresh. Um, and I made sure I took off the little stems. In this particular container, there are a little bit, a little frost on them, but that's okay. So this little container, if I turn it over, it says two cups. So I have two cups of blueberries, two cups of bananas. So I'll set that aside. So for the blueberries, I'm going to put them in a bowl. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of flour I don't exactly have an exact measurement. Let's say a heaping tablespoon. And I'm going to cover it somewhat with the flour. And I don't need that much. And I'm just gonna do this. So I'm just kind of coating them. And you do the same thing when you're making blueberry muffins or blueberry um, cake or whatever you wanna. Anytime you use the blueberries, you usually 
pink and cover them with a little bit of flour. I'm going to be making this in a 9 by 13 casserole dish. You could use two bread pans if you'd like, or you could actually make this into muffins, which is also fine. I prefer it this way because I could go ahead and cut the size piece I want very easily. So I'm taking butter and some plastic wrap and I'm just coating hopefully every inch of the pan, the glass casserole pan or dish. And you could use metal if you want. I like for fruit, though, in particular, to use glass. I think it is better. Because there's a lot of, like, acid and stuff in fruit. I don't really like the way that it tastes with metal. With glass, there's no flavor change. Okay, so you got to try to get every inch of it. As I said, one day I was watching one of my videos and I noticed that I, like, missed some spots. So I'm just going to try to be very diligent and get it all over so we don't have any sticking. Okay. Now I'm going to dry my hands, get the butter off my hands, and then now I'm going to do flour. Take that spoon that I had earlier and just take some flour. I think I'm going to need a little bit more. And I'm going to take this to the sink. Okay, so I'll move the faucet side of the way, and then I will just adjust the camera so everybody can see. That'd be a good idea. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to kind of go around like this with the flour so that it gets on all the edges. And then I'm going to take the excess and bang it out. And then I have a silicon brush and I'm just going to make sure any little spots that I missed just kind of brush them and then just pour out the excess and then we have that all taken care of. Let's start with the dry ingredients. So I need three and a half cups of flour. I hope I have three and a half cups of flour in here. If not, I'll be having to go in the other room where I keep my extra flour. So when measuring out flour, here's my cup. When measuring out flour, you want to level it off. So I use the back of a butter knife or I use a um, metal spatula. This was what was handy. So we need three and a half. So one. Two, three, and then I have my half of cup here. And there's my half. And then I need four and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Okay, so you want to make sure that you're using baking powder and not accidentally baking soda because that will not work. And when measuring baking powder, you also need to level it off. So I like to use the lid of my baking powder. So let's count. One, two, three, Four, and then I have my little half a teaspoon, which brings me to four and a half teaspoons of baking powder. And now I need a, about a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to do a little bit less because I don't like my baked goods to taste too salty, but you do need a little bit to make the baking powder work. Okay, so now I'm going to take a fork and I'm going to kind of pre-stir my dry ingredients. But I do need to add 
some cinnamon before I get stirring too much. So I want a minimum of a teaspoon of cinnamon, but I'm probably going to do a heaping teaspoon of cinnamon because I love cinnamon. So put that in there. You can do less if you'd like. That's kind of a personal preference on the taste. So I am going to set this aside and I'm going to start my oven at 350 degrees. So I'm going to preheat it for 350. Time for the sugar. So I need a cup and a third of sugar. So in measuring sugar, you also need to level your sugar off just like you did the flour. So one. My third measuring cup, one and a third of the sugar, and then I need two thirds cup butter. So on the butter, it shows you right here that is one third. So I'm going to cut it here, and then I'm going to take another stick and I'm going to do the same thing. And then the excess I will just put in my butter container for later or something else. All right, so I need a somewhat sharp knife. It doesn't have to be super sharp. I did go ahead and put the butter on the counter to soften it up earlier to make things easier. Okay, so my line, of course, is over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the back of the knife and kind of just make a line, kind of just go around. So I kind of know where it's at. So let's see, did I successfully make my line? Okay, there we go. Kind of lost track of where I was at with that. Okay, so I'm gonna use this butter for something else. And let's do a better job of this this time. I'm going to just mark it this way. I don't want to cut through because then I make it wax paper in my food, which I don't want to do. Okay, let's see if I made a nice line this time. Yes, I did. See, there we go. There, it's done correctly. All right, so I'm going to put that in there. Save the, put the butter in my butter container. I need three eggs. One. Two. Three. Okay, and it does not matter if you're new to, to baking, it doesn't matter if you want to use brown eggs or you use white eggs, it doesn't make a difference. These particular eggs are large eggs though. So that might make a difference. So I am using large eggs. I always use large eggs. So anytime you see my videos, I'm always using large eggs. All right, so here's, I'm gonna go wash my hands after touching these okay, eggs. So I have my three eggs, and now I'm going to put in two teaspoons of vanilla extract. One, two. And if you notice some of the vanilla extract kind of overflowed, which is fine. So vanilla extract, cinnamon, things like that. If you have a little bit extra, it's okay. The main thing is, is you want to get your butter correct. You want to get your flour correct and your baking powder for sure correct and the amount of eggs correct. So we are going to start mixing things up, but let's go over the ingredient list. I always like to do this even if I'm not filming because it helps prevent mistakes. Okay, so we have three and a half cups of flour. We have four and a half teaspoons of baking powder. We have a little less than a teaspoon of salt. We have a heaping teaspoon of cinnamon, which you could use an exact teaspoon of cinnamon. If for some reason you don't like cinnamon, you can leave the cinnamon out, although I would recommend adding it. 
you might like it a lot, even if you normally don't like cinnamon. Um, two thirds cup butter, and I did soften it first just by leaving it on the counter for a while. And then I have one and a third cup of sugar, and I have two teaspoons of vanilla, three eggs. We have our two cups of bananas and our two cups of blueberries, which have some flour on them. And now it's time to go over to the mixer and start mixing everything together. One thing I didn't show everybody is I usually like to go ahead and always put my extracts with my eggs, but I like to also, once I do that, take a fork and kind of pre-mix the eggs and the extract up. All right. So now we're ready to first start with the sugar and the butter. And we are going to use, today we're gonna to use this type of attachment. Even though this is banana bread and the word bread is in it, it's light, it's not a heavy bread like when you make like white bread or sourdough bread or any of those other breads. So we do not need a dough hook. We would use a dough hook also for cookie dough. Don't need to use that. And we wouldn't want to use a wire whisk because that's for egg whites and sauces and things that are very light. So we're pretty much using a medium beater. And I'm gonna go grab my rubber spatula before we so get started. It. If you don't have a rubber spatula and you're gonna do a lot of baking, this is a really good idea. I found this one that also is like a spoon almost, so that'll be handy for adding the flour also. All right, so let's get started. I have to put the splash guard on, because otherwise things will just go flying. And this should cream together very nicely. So we're creaming the butter and the sugar together, and it should cream together nicely because I actually let it sit on the counter a while, which is good. I actually pre-planned it. Sometimes I don't, and then I'm dealing with a very cold butter, which is harder to cream together. Okay, let's check for sticking along the sides of the bowl. And this is where the rubber spatula comes in handy and I'm just looking to see if anything stuck but it really didn't and so I think I'm ready to add the next ingredients which would be the vanilla and the eggs. I'm going to pour that in and I'm going to take that rubber spatula and kind of just scrape all the egg off the bowl. the sides again. Okay, so this looks like it's mixed up pretty well. And now we're going to add the flour. So when I'm adding the flour, I'm going to just do a little bit of time. And then you'll see me pour the, the rest of it, oops, <laughs> pour the rest of it into the bowl. So We'll just empty into the mixing bowl. So I'm just going to start right now, just add a little bit. So you'll hear the mixer go fast and then you'll hear it slow down as I'm when I go ahead and add stuff. So I'll start it slow, make it go fast, and then um, slow it down again to add more ingredients. <laughs>
going to take this rubber spatula and just kind of go along the sides with it. mixed up pretty well and it doesn't look like it's sticking so I am going to add the bananas now. And this adds a lot of moisture into the bread. it's going. I could tell already I need to scrape the sides. And besides scra scraping the sides, you want to kind of go all the way down to the bottom and scrape the bottom because that's another spot that it tends to want to stick. Boy, these, ba this banana, these bananas are very, very sweet smelling to me. They're probably just the right amount of ripeness. Try to scrape this side. We're going to use the beater to get the excess off my spatula. All right. Let's go a little longer. to the batter. So the idea is to really mix it up well and you're mixing the air in there to make it a light and fluffy banana bread. This is smelling very good by the way because the cinnamon and the bananas and everything's smelling great. So I'm going to scrape this beater off the rubber spatula. Almost getting very close. This, and I'm gonna go ahead and hand mix it a little bit. I'm just wanting to make sure nothing's sticking. Sometimes it's hard to get all the angles when you're trying to do it when it's attached to the mixer itself. Okay, so now it is time to add the blueberries. So this is a little bit tricky, so I'm going to just, I think I'm going to add a few at a time and mix. So what I'm going to do is what they call folding it in. So I don't want to crush these blueberries. I want them to kind of stay full. So I'm kind of just folding it. This is how, that's what they mean by, if you have the, a recipe that says fold. I'm folding it in. I'm going to add a few more because I just 
don't want them to be in a clump. So I'll do it in three, in three um, things. So this is the second time I'm doing it, and then we'll add the rest. Mmm. I said it is smelling good already, and it hasn't even baked yet. All right. So here's the last bunch of blueberries. Just kind of taking my hand and just kind of sprinkling it around. The flour, I think, helps it them not to just fall apart. Kind of gives it a little bit of a coating. And some of them are breaking open. That'll just make the taste explode into the bread. Okay, I'm going to go take it over to a clean part of the counter where we will put it in the casserole. So now it's time to pour it into here. I'm just kind of <laughs> mixing it up for good measure. Okay, so let's, and I'm going to scrape the bowl out as I'm kind of hard to show you. As I'm pouring it out, I'm also scraping the bowl. Okay. I continue to scrape this. Try to get all the batter off the pear. Okay, take my heater and kind of use it to, to scrape off the excess. I'm going to actually use what you would frost a cake with to get the batter into the corners. You could use a, a butter knife, which also would work nicely, but I thought, you know, this would probably even be better. So the idea is to try as much as possible to kind of have this level so that you don't have one thin spot and one high spot. So just do your best. I guarantee it's going to taste good <laughs> either way, but if you can just kind of level it off to be even, it'll be nice. So you don't want one spot to be too thin and one spot to be really thick. Okay, so if I get the last of that a little bit, then I have a problem there. I have to try to level it off again. Okay, so all right, now I'm going to take cinnamon and sugar, which I just took a an empty container of cinnamon and then did half uh, I filled half of it with more cinnamon and half with sugar and then shook it up and then I like to use the little sprinkler that it comes with and you can actually buy metal ones if you want and then just do it that way but I just used an old one of these and I just have it marked cinnamon and sugar so I'm going to just start in the corner and just kind of work my way this way across. Kind of putting on a generous amount. And you don't have to do this. Again, if you don't like cinnamon for some reason, or if you just wanted to do cinnamon, I like the cinnamon and sugar combo. It makes it taste really nice. Okay, so now if you are doing an actual banana bread, that's it in a loaf pan. It's probably going to take you a good hour for sure to bake this. Because this is not in a loaf pan and it's thinner, I'm going to set the timer for 20 minutes and then I'll check it. I have a feeling it's going to be about, typically it's about 30 minutes, sometimes 40 minutes, depending on the moisture in your house too, makes a difference on stuff. So just to play it safe, I will set my timer for 20 minutes and we will check on it. Very short. It's been about 20 minutes, so let's take a look and just see where we're at on things. 
so it definitely looks like it needs to go longer and I'm just gonna set a timer for about 10 more minutes just to play it safe and then I'll put a toothpick in it and check it out so we will check again in 10 minutes so I pulled this out of the oven because I didn't want it to be in there any longer but I'm almost positive it is done oh it is not done good thing I did a double check so it's going back in the oven Okay, so let's check it. So what we're looking for is for the toothpick to come out completely clean. If you pull it out and there's still batter on it that's not cooked, then it's not done. So here is the toothpick completely clean. And so it is ready. I'm not gonna pop it back in the oven or anything. So I'm just gonna let it cool down for just a while. It's hard to resist it. The whole house smells so delicious. This really looks good. I'm looking forward to taste testing it, but I have to be patient and wait. And so I'll be back soon to do the taste test. All right. I hope everybody's having a good day. I know I'm going to have a good day after I try some of this banana blueberry bread. Looks very good. It smells very good. The whole house smells delicious. Okay, so I'm going to take a piece and I'm going to make sure I have blueberries in here. And it did go throughout the cake quite well, so I was happy about that. Mmm. Very, very good. Super moist. The blueberries really complement the bananas and the cinnamon. Makes everything really taste very good. I'm gonna try another piece so I can describe this to you. Mmm. So the banana bread, as it is, tastes really good. And then you bite into the blueberries, and it kind of just kind of explodes, kind of, and kind of like a jelly in there. I'm gonna show you again. So very delicious. I think I know what I'm having for tomorrow morning for breakfast with some coffee. That is for sure. That's why I always do a double batch because you can't just eat one piece. That's for sure. But I'm going to sit down and put up my feet and enjoy the rest of this. It's absolutely delicious. I hope you try making this at home. It was kind of fun to make. And um, if you subscribe to my channel, I really appreciate it. And if you don't, it is free and I hope that you do. And I hope that everybody checks out some of my other videos. Um, I like to make fun foods, foods that I call fun. And um, I have main courses, of course, my favorites, dessert always. But uh, thank you for watching. Have a great evening.